that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor heights nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 13. This all died in faith. Not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and we are persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth for they that say such things they clear plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to, to have returned. But now, they desire a better country that is an heavenly well for God is not ashamed to be called their God for he had prepared for them a city from this uh, chapters and verses I'm bringing to you the topic our topic today is determined to make heaven at last Determine to make heaven at last. We all should know that we are strangers in this world. And no matter how many years one may live in this world, one day he or she will surely leave this world. Many have come and they have gone even before us. And many in our, in our very eyes have gone those whom we knew some of our beloved ones have gone and gone forever we love them while we are here while, we are, while they were alive we love them so much but when their time for departure came, we could not stop them. Our love notwithstanding, our remedy, our efforts notwithstanding, we couldn't stop them and so they departed. And that forever they have gone to unknown. The world of unknown. Some have gone to heaven and some have gone to hell. Remember those that are children of God have gone to a type of heaven. 
deine Selbstherz, deine Bosom of Abraham, dein Paradise, of course, they will eventually enter heaven at the end of it all because they are saved. They can't enter hell fire because they were qualified, they were made pure, they were purified, they were holy, and they were saints. But those that are not saved have gone to hell waiting for final abode of the wicked. Hell fire. They can never come out of there again to make heaven. I want you to take note. Some of these people did not have the opportunity we have today to hear the gospel. Some lived very long before they die or before they leave this world. They didn't hear the gospel. Some of them also before they are long gone, Christ has not come. And so many of them also before this time they don't have the privilege of hearing the gospel as we're hearing it today, many years back. They lived long, but they lived wasted life. They had an opportunity to amend their ways and have gone and gone forever to be in hell and hell fire forever. So, what matters today is having had the gospel, you, we, we should determine to make heaven at last because it is a special privilege for us to hear the gospel, for us to be in this time of grace. For us also to have this kind of opportunity where the revival has broken out and many people have had the gospel through the mouth of uh, pastors, apostles. We have had the word of God. And it is a great privilege that we must not allow to be wasted. So, we must determine, having had the gospel, to make heaven at last, whether by, whether by, the partial death or by rapture. You know that all of us are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ to rapture the saints. And while we are waiting, some people might go before the rapture. As you know that today, not all that woke up today are still alive. Some have gone. But they woke up this morning, but now they are nowhere. And if such person did not amend his life, or take what he has had see very serious, and determined to make heaven, not minding the trials, oppositions, challenges. If the person did not determine and the person lived a careless life, now if he or she has gone, 
There shall be no more time for amendment. He has gone and gone forever. If he has lived a careless life, that person will go to hell fire at the end of it all. So, while we are here waiting for the rapture, let's still make sure that our determination is to make heaven at the end of this life. I want us to take note. If you, you are not determined to do so, you will allow everything. You will live your life like others. But if you are determined, there are some things you will not do. If you are determined to make heaven, you can't do what others are doing. You will try to live your life according to the will of God and righteousness. If you look at the book of First Corinthians chapter 9, let's see. First Corinthians chapter 9. I read chapter 9 from verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. You see, people of the world that want to obtain a crown win gold. They are temperate. Don't, don't do things to, they don't eat anyhow, don't eat excess food. They don't drink anyhow. In fact, they don't speak anyhow. They don't do anyhow. Because they want to win a good that temperate in all things. They do not allow entanglement or distractions. They concentrate on what they are given to do and they do it accordingly, not anyhow. If you look at verse 26, I therefore so wrong, because all that are in this heavenly journey were in a race. That's why this apostle likened it to athletes, those who are running race. And he said, I therefore so wrong, not as uncertainly so find I, not as one that beated the air. The apostle said, I'm running this race, not as he do, nothing is at stake, or I'm running it endlessly. And running this race, not as if though that nothing is at stake, one that beat the air. I'm not running this race at, for nothing. I'm running this race because something is at stake. And if you look at verse 27, it says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. Now, for this apostle, he knew that the uttermost goal of running this race is to make it is to make heaven at last. So for him, he had determined not allow any carelessness or carefree attitude 
he has determined not allow anything that will hinder him from making heaven at the end of his life. That is why he said, I bring my body under. Because the body is earthly. The body loves everything about the world. The body wants enjoyment. In fact, if you are following the body, you make a lot of mistakes. And yet the body will perish. It cannot enter heaven. It will deceive whoever that carries it and listen to it and follow it and do and give it everything that it demands. So he said, I keep my body under. I do not allow, allow my body to control me. I control my body. So that at the end of it all, I will not be a cast away. So for him, he has determined to make heaven. And as a result, he is making sure that whatsoever that will hinder him, he will deal with those things. He will not allow those things. He will conquer those things. He will overcome those things. And that is the life of anybody who wants to make it at last? That is the lifestyle. That person must be ready to make sure that nothing will hinder you from making it. Whatever it may be, you can do away with that thing. That's one who is the means. So make up your mind that come what may, you must make heaven at last if you make up your mind you are me like that there are many things you cannot do there are many things you cannot give yourself to so determine to make heaven at last either by death or either by rapture. Remember, very shortly the trumpet shall sound. The church will go on rapture. But if you are a careless person and you do like the people of the world, you join them, you live your life like them, and you are careless carefully about what we are saying of the, the preparation and of the lifestyle that we feed the kingdom here and kingdom above. If you are careless about that, when the trumpet shall sound, you might not be among them. So my prayer is whether dead or rapture, Determined to make heaven and keep to the necessary preparation to make it to make it last in Jesus' name. So we are going to consider the flowing subheadings. One, the reasons and determination explained. Determination explained. Two, our special response and the danger of missing heaven. Let's go to point number one. The reasons and the determination, the determination explained. Everyone should understand that to make heaven at last is our goal, is our uttermost goal. Why we are in the church, why we are born again, why we gave our life to Jesus Christ is to make heaven at last. It is not for material things. It is not for money. It is not for healing. It is not for deliverance. It is not for protection. It is not for the things of this life. The reason for being born again 
why we give our life to Jesus Christ is to make heaven at last. You should understand that. Every other thing is secondary. Whatsoever you are looking for. And those things are just addition. Take note of that. The reason being that heaven is the eternal abode of the righteous. The abode of the saints. Or the holy angels. Or the holy trinity. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Heaven is the home of the holy people, the holy God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Son of God, the holy children of God. Heaven is our final abode. Take note of that. The earth is not. If you look at your Bible, you see where our God, our Father, is dwelling, where he's living. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, let's see something there. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray, pray, our Father, which art in heaven. Where? Our Father is where? in heaven so God is living in heaven likewise in fact the trinity God the Father the Son the Holy Ghost are living in heaven what about the angels in Matthew 25 verse 31 Matthew 25 verse 31 when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he start upon the throne of his glory. He is coming with which people? With which being? Holy angels. Coming from where? From heaven. So, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the angels are all living in heaven and heaven is the home of the holy people home of believers home of all the saints in John chapter 14 verse 26 John chapter 14 But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The point is, it's coming from Father, and the Father is where? In heaven. So, oh, oh, oh. the Holy Ghost, the Holy Father, the Holy Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Angels, all of them are living in heaven. And that is the home of the holy people, home of the saints, home of the righteous. That's our entire home. Take note of that. Besides, heaven is a place of comfort, a place of peace, a place of joy, unspeakable joy, forever. A place where there shall not be suffering anymore, and there shall be no want of any good thing. Every good thing is in heaven. A place where there shall be no work. Heaven is a place of internal rest. 
that shall be no more labor. As I told you, no more work, no more suffering. There shall be no suffering in heaven at all, at all. Already mansions have been prepared for us. The people of God, children of God, and as we cross over, we shall take possession of our mansion and we shall live in our mansion forever. If you look at the Bible in John chapter 14, verse 1, John chapter 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So, don't let you have a trouble about the mansions and the perishable mansions on earth. They cannot be compared with the, com with the mansion which God has prepared for us in heaven above. It cannot be compared with it. There is a mansion that can never decay. There is a mansion that can never be destroyed. And that is the place that God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, has prepared for us where the children of God shall be forever and ever. And so no matter what you are going through here, let not your heart be troubled. I have a better house. I don't have a house here. I have a mansion that cannot be destroyed. And that is in heaven, waiting for you until you cross over. You don't have anything here. I want to let you know every good thing is waiting for you in heaven above. If you look at Revelation, Revelation chapter 21. Let's see. Revelation chapter 21. I read. Chapter 21. From verse. Revelation 21 from verse 3. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Now that shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Rise, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end. I will give unto him, that is a test, of the fountain of the water of life freely. Verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And so, there's nothing to worry. Don't I don't know what you are suffering and what you are going through. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. No more suffering, no more pain, no more death. No more pain, no more thirst or hunger. The Lord will satisfy us from eternity to eternity. And so, I want to let you know that if you be a child of God and living right no matter the challenges and no matter what 
you are going through, let not your heart be what? Troubled. There is better things for you and the internal. They shall not be destroyed from everlasting to everlasting. And as long as everyone must leave this world, either by death or rapture, one must determine to make heaven at last. Because in the absence of it, the devil can deceive such a person to miss this glorious home. If there is no determination, the devil can deceive you. The devil can use the useless things of this world to corrupt you, to blind you, to entangle you, to distract you, to hinder you from this focus, from this heaven that is internal and every good, good thing about it is internal. And you know, my brothers and sisters that he, this world is just a temporary place. Nobody has ever lived in this earth forever. Many generations have come and they have gone. And in the next hundred years, if Jesus tarries, none of us will be here again. All of us are still here. Next hundred years, you may not see any of us. The question then is, where did we go? Seeing that this world is numbered and is finished, and it's just a short period, and if you are 50 years now, let's give you 100 years, you become 150 years. If you are 35 years, we'll give you more 100 years, you become 135 years. If you are 20 years now, I'll give you 100 years, you become 120 years. The question is this, will you still be here? Assuming if Jesus tarries, assuming if Jesus delayed in coming, of course, he will not tarry. That's what the Bible said. It's coming shortly. So, seeing that this place is a short you know, short period, highest, 150 years. And yet, not many people are living 150 years. If you are 150 years, people will be avoiding you. Even your own children will run away from you. They will be wishing you to go. If you are 150 years now, you become a, a liability to your children. They will don't want to see you again. Some will be praying for you to go. Some will calling you names. Some will say you are the cause of their problem. Why don't you go? So you can see the world we are into. And none of the things of the world will be sweet to you anymore. And none of your friends, you will know will that be still around anymore. They have all gone. If you are 150 years. You can say, let me go to John. That, that my primary school friend. Let me go to my neighbor. That our neighbor there, who you, you used to know 100 years ago. He has gone, gone a long way, long time ago. So you just be operating alone. So, we have to take note of this. This word is is just for a short while and if the world is for a short while don't let anything to do what to deceive you because everything about this life is bundle of deception is something that devil have you know the things that devil want to use to to blind you, to hinder you, to make sure you don't make it. I, I suppose that that little child is not doing ultra. 
if that is a work, you should send him to children's class. That wasting time. Praise the Lord. So let's make sure. Let's make sure that we know that this word is short. And this word will not be forever. No matter how good thing you are enjoying, it's just temporary. No matter suffering, it's just temporary. And if that be the case, determine to do what? To make heaven. Because it's a question of a period of time. You cross over. The way you pursue money, the way you pursue your goal in this world, change it and pursue heaven like that. Because heaven is worth pursuing, just like Apostle Paul. He said, I put my body on that. So at least after all this rest, I might say will be a cast away. I don't know what it is stopping you. You want to get money, you want to marry, you want to you know, you want to get education, you want to get the things of this world, and they are taking your time from money to night, and yet you can't take any of this thing out of the world. And yet this thing can deceive you, make you to go to hell and suffer from eternity to eternity. What is the wisdom? That you have the whole world and it's a period of time and you go to suffer a hair fire from eternity to eternity. So if you know those things, the way you pursue those things, change it and pursue heaven like that. You get to it. Determined to make heaven at last. I've told you, in the absence of you having this understanding and determination, the devil can deceive you, give you this. And not, it's not giving you anything. It's only that you keep quiet so you can enter all the cra trap and it will hold you. It has nothing to give you. So if you, if you do not have understanding and give him chance, he will deal with you. It will entangle you, it will change you, it will trap and trap you, and you will be, you know, locked up in prison or kept like a Christmas good. It will bound you. You know what is a Christmas good? If your Christmas is coming, some people will buy good and put some chain, rope. And the, the, the goat or cow will be feeding the very good grass. And if you want water, the person will carry water and give to the goat or cow. And the thing will be drinking and happy that everything now is very easy. If you need water, they give the goat water. If you need a cow, they give the cow water or give the cow food. And they put the cow in a very good grass. But it's on the chain. He's on the rope. He cannot run. He's waiting for pointed there so that they'll cut off the head. But he's eating very well. He, he, before he will go to the struggle to look for where to get water. But now they'll carry water and give to the goat or cow. He will drink water. They'll go and carry leaves and drop. He will take leaves. Even if he needs some dishes, some fine, fine food, they'll go and give. But he's under. Share. Waiting for what? A day of slaughter. That's what so many people are in this world now. Devil has chained them with the things of this world. Waiting for a day of what? Slaughter. Don't be deceived. Don't make the devil your friend. He's not a friend. Look at John chapter 10 verse 10. 
Jump chapter 10. Verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Take a look. He comes to do what? To kill, to steal, and to destroy. He is not a friend. Devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Don't make him a friend. If you don't have understanding and even determined to make heaven, you will make him a friend. He will carry his assignment and he will put you in prison. He will entangle you. He will steal all the virtues, all the knowledge. He will steal all everything about God from you and give you, you know, chaff. He will give you something that you will be eating, thinking you are eating. But it is a rope, Christmas rope. I mean, tied you, waiting for a day, for a day of slaughter. To make a Christmas goat or car. I pray that you be delivered from that yoke in Jesus' name. For the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Don't be entangled. There is nothing here. Here is a transit place. Here is a, a place where you rest a little and cross over to the final abode. So take note. The devil is not a friend. The Bible says in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Let's see. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 Be sober Be vigilant Because we are adversaries The devil as a roaring lion Walketh about seeking whom he may devour They called him what? Your adversary, your enemy. Devil is enemy of humanity, enemy of human beings, enemy of believers, enemy of God. He is very angry because he was cast out of heaven, never to enter heaven. And as a matter of retaliation, he doesn't want any human being to enter heaven. He wants to take all of them to hell fire. So is your enemy. Lack of knowledge of this has made people to be enslaved with adultery, fornication, occultism, and enslaved with uh, all kinds of, you know, practicing of, uh, you know, evil. Because they lack this knowledge that the devil is your enemy and has no good thing for you. That's why people that don't have this knowledge Go to join a cult, a cult, marine spirit, which last week, go to native doctors and perish. He will swallow them. He said, he walked about like an angry lion looking for who to swallow. And if he swallow them, they have no more power to free themselves. So, you should know that devil is what? I'm not hearing you again. Our enemy. And then, if you know this fact, you will not give him chance. Look at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 Neither give place to the devil Don't give him what? Don't give him chance Neither give chance to the devil Because we have been told He comes to keep, to steal and to destroy Do you open door for, for thief to come in? Answer me Do you open your door for killer to come in? 
No. Do you make a killer who wants to kill you a friend? That's why he said, neither give place to the devil. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Don't give him chance. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 13 verse 24. Let's see what the Bible says based on this fact. That's why we say determine. The Bible said, and I read in Luke chapter 13 verse 24. 13 verse 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gates. For many I say unto you, we seek to enter in and shall not be able. Strive to enter. You must determine. You must make sure that come what may persecution, fire, hunger, um, de delay, disappointment, opposition, no matter what you are facing, you must keep on moving forward. Are you hearing me? You must not allow a situation where you are looking for sympathy. Uh, I don't know what my mother will say. Uh, I, I'm not doing well. I don't know what my father, my brother, and my friend will say. They will say, I'm not meeting up. I don't know what my colleague will say. My husband will, I will not like it. My wife will not like it. My parents will not like it. My friend, don't say that. Heaven is individual rest. Whether they, they don't need to, you see, they don't have the understanding. And you that have the understanding, you must, you must, you must stand your ground. You will, and the one that will be interpreting and praying and speaking and preaching to them, you don't need to get their consent in order for you to go to heaven, in order for you to run the Christian race, in order for you to live the Christian life. You don't need to do that. Say, hey, my father, my friend, they will say, ah, why do you join them? Why do you become born again? Heaven is individual rest. Therefore, determine to make heaven at last. No matter who is there, don't allow them to hinder you. No matter who is opposing you, no matter who is saying this or that, strive to do all. Enter. For many shall seek to enter, but they will not be what? Able, because a lot of things will be there to discourage them, a lot of things to make them to, you know, feel weak. This one say this, and on this this one does this. Strive to do what? In Mark chapter nine. Please open your Bible. Let's read. Mark chapter nine. From verse 43. And if thy hands offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life meant and having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, plug it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye 
than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where the womb dieth not and the fire is not quenched you see no matter how important that thing may be that can be likened to your eye to your hands to your leg he said cut it off if you are determined to make heaven you will cut off everything that corrupts you that will seduce you that will hinder you the company, the friends the business, the association whatever that will hinder you you cut it off as, as much as important as your feet, your hands, your eyes. Because heaven is incomparable. You can't equate it with anything on earth. Any glory, any city, anywhere on earth. It's an incomparable heaven. And it's a place of eternity. Once you enter, you enjoy forever. And but if you miss it and enter the fire, you suffer from eternity to eternity. Therefore, don't make the mistake. No matter what is offered to you, no matter what you are going to enjoy, or no matter what is given to you, if you are to enjoy in this world, look at the Bible in Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Let's read from verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Anything. Therefore, decide, determine to make heaven at last. That determination will make you not to compromise. To, and that determination will make you to cut off anything. I will hinder you. So, determine. Heaven is an individual rest, as I've told you. Those who live by either, whether by rapture or by death, those who must make it by these ways, must determine to do what? To make it. Determine to make heaven at last. Like, for the apostle so I put my body under so that I don't run this rest in vain I, so I will not be a castaway now if you look at Hebrews chapter 11 Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13 This all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And we are persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. But they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Talking about our elders, fathers of faith, who, even though having not seen Jesus, having not, you know, received the promise of salvation through Jesus Christ, they just believe that what God said is truth. And as a result of that, they believe that promise and even died in faith, believing and died. And for them, they believe that God, what God said is truth and it exists. Heaven exists, heaven exists. They believe it. Now, if you look at that place, it says, For they that say such things, verse 14, declare plainly that they seek what? A country. Now, verse 15, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had the opportunity to do what? To have returned. What is that saying? These people came out of Egypt. And they believe the promise of God. And now, if they have been mindful of Egypt, 
on the country where they have been, they would have liked to go back to that country. But they believe and they were not interested about Egypt as we that are born again, children of God, will not be mindful of what is happening in the world, their glory, their title, their pleasure, their enjoyment. And then our eyes is fixed on making heaven at last. That whatever they are saying, whatever they are doing, is not our business. Our business is to make heaven at last. We don't want to go and become chief again. Is any of you want to be chief? Answer me now. Do you want to go and be chief of your village? No, we have left those where. Even if they attach money and give it to us, we will not take. Are you hearing me? They call you and say, come and be our chairman of association. No, I am a child of God. I have left that way. Chairman of the social club. Governor or president. No, I have left that way. I am going to heaven. I hope you are hearing what I am saying. Heaven is better than the earth. It's incomparable. If you are president or governor or, or, or chairman, highest, eight years, you will come down with a lot of accusations, with a lot of trouble. But here, we are going to wear forever and ever no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. So they, they knew it. And so for them, they said, we are looking for a country, so we, don't, we are not mindful of your country, and whatever you have, we are going to heaven. What does that mean? Now look at that place we are reading. In chapter 11, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16. For, but now they desire a better country. That is what? And a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them what? A city. So for them, they are going to the city of heaven. And so they are not interested about the earthly, they were determined. And therefore they suffered so many things and overcame. And today, they have crossed over. Praise the Lord. So determined to make it. Sisters and brothers, you have not lost anything in living the world. What is ahead of us that is incomparable with this useless world? Are you hearing me? If you mention, go to your Bible, like if you go to Genesis chapter 5, you mention the men that lived. You will hear of Methuselah. You will hear of all, you know, uh, uh, Enoch, Anua. Many of them lived 700 years, 900 years. But the only shocking thing we hear is they die. 700 years and they die. 900 years and they die. And, you know, uh, 800 years and they die. So, which means, no matter how many years, they must do what? Die. So what matters is where we are going to live what? I'm not hearing you again. Where we are going to live from eternity to what? Eternity. Where that shall never be, he die. So take note of this. Don't be deceived. The world is deceitful. The world is deceitful. This world me and you are living now. Many people have lived like this and gone. May I remind you, some years back, 
many of our parents were alive. But today, many of them are not alive. The father of your father, okay, let's forget about the father of your father, but the father, your father's father, eh? and father, that one, they have gone. They're like story. If you're talking about your forefathers now, it's like a story. But they lived. Didn't they? The man that born your father's father, did he exist? He existed. There was a time they were living like this and doing their, their show, doing their business. But they have gone. And you think we will not go? Ah. If Jesus tarried for the next hundred years, you hardly see anybody here that are still alive. Even the little children of one year now will be 101 years. I don't, are you following the point I'm making? So, this is this word, if we call it useless, the glory, everything about this world, forget about it. So, I don't know what challenges you are going through. I want you to drop your faith and lose focus and miss heaven at last. I don't know. But I thank God for men like Paul the Apostles and the Apostles of old. If you look at the Bible, look at the confession in Romans chapter 8. Born out of their determination. Romans chapter 8 verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for, the, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. we are Accounted as cheap for the slaughter, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, whether nor riches, nor title, nor position, nothing can separate me. From the love of Christ. Nothing can separate me from heaven, my goal to make heaven at last. Now, if you look at verse 39, it says, Look at verse 39. Let's, okay, let's start from that. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He said nothing. Nothing, nothing. Thing present, things to come, height or depth, man or woman, money, title, position, nothing. So when you determine, nothing can separate you from God. Praise the Lord. But if you are not that I mean, oh, when they wave house or money or women to you, you can drop, you can compromise. God forbid. When they, when they present you title, come and be our leader. Come and be our governor, our listing. The local government chairman. You begin to look for your faith again. Come and be your chief. Come and be our market association leader. Your head will swell up. There is nothing there. What is there is dead. It's affliction and trouble and bad name 
and the hair fire. If you have this fact, if you permit to make heaven, when these things are calling you, you will count them as what? Well, don't count them as nothing because of your precious soul. So determine to do what? Make heaven at last. Many things are bound as an instrument by the devil to hinder you. Many, many things. All these things that people, listen to me, my brethren. Many of these things you are seeing in this world are devil's trap. Trap, you are set to hold, make sure you are distracted, you are entangled, you are hindered. Things that to make sure that you lose focus on heaven and then you are busy for nothing, not to win soul, not to prepare your soul. Look at the world we are talking about today. Everywhere is checking, 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 checking. To show you that the world is ready to vomit the people. Because of too much wickedness. Everywhere is checking. Any, part, any country of the world, everywhere in the world, is checking because the earth has drank so much blood. A lot of wickedness has been committed in the earth. And the earth is ready to vomit the people. Everywhere is checking, checking. If you run to anywhere now, it's like no safety, no peace, trouble everywhere. The best thing determined to do what? I'm not hearing you again. Okay, do you want me to tell you determined to make the earth? To make the kingdom of the earth? My friend, listen to me. The kingdom and the glory of this world passes away. Look at First Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is what? Short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they have no. And they that we as though they were not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the function of this world passes away. The glory of this world, those worlds, passes away. So whatever, are you getting married? You have a husband, handle it with a light hand. Business, light hand. Anything you are doing, light hand. As one who will lift them, as one who will abandon them, because naked we came into this world, and in certain we can carry nothing out. So handle the world with what? Light hand. The glory of this world, title, position, power, money, house, human beings, glory. The beautiful women of 1960, if you bring them here now, they will not be beautiful again. Am I right? If there is a lady that used to be very beautiful, queen, queen, 1960, if you come out here today, will it be so beautiful? Please answer me now. What of the car they drove in 1960? If they bring it here, is it so beautiful? What are the house that they built then? Is it still fascinating? Answer me now. The handsome man that used to leave the hair and you know do all these things, 1958. If you see that handsome man now, how will he look like? Eh? So if you see for that person to look fine, you need to put new body, you need to go for panel beta. They will panel beat the first out. Panel beat the system out. And then walk on the and put remove the put new hair. The glory of this world 
passes away. So, determine to do what? I'm not hearing you, sisters. I don't know what you want me to tell you. What I'm telling you now is what you need. This world is not forever. Don't make mistake. Don't kill yourself. Don't go to hell. So, that is the point number two. I've told you that I mean to make heaven at last. Our expected response and the danger of missing heaven. We should know that the trumpet can sound any time from now or the otherwise. Trumpet can do what? Any time from now. If not the trumpet, the otherwise can occur. What is otherwise? Dead. The trumpet can sound any time from now. In the absence of the trumpet, dead can occur any time. And if that be the case, then this message is very necessary. So that you can amend your ways. You can determine to make it. Take notes. The Bible may not understand. One thing that I'm very sure is whether now or there it shall surely come. Something, these two things will surely come to pass. Dead or what? Or rapture. So if you look at the Bible in First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 51 let's see 15 verse 51 behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last throne for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption. I mean, for this corruptible must put on what? Incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. He said, and it can happen in a moment. The trumpet can sound any time from now, and then we shall be changed. Believers, we put on celestial body, and then we will go to meet with the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when it is going to happen, there will be no room for preparation. It is in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment. So if you didn't get ready, you'll miss it. And if you look at First Thessalonians chapter 4, First Thessalonians chapter 4, I read verse 3. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, Concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Them that are what? Asleep. Them that sleep in the Lord. And if I sorrow him, don't sorrow as if though uh, you are unbeliever. If you're a believer, we're going to see them again when the trumpet shall sound. But then, if you look at this place, still remind us of this program of God. He said in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also 
which live in Jesus will the God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we wish our life and remain unto the coming of the Lord. The rapture shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of angel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we wish our life and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the point is, when this trumpet shall sound, we, we that are believers who are living right, determined to make heaven, we shall be changed and we shall go to meet with the Lord in the air. And even those people that died or slept in the Lord, they shall also be raised from dead. They shall go up to meet with the Lord and there we meet together to part no more. We shall be with the Lord forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Take note of this. So, this event is coming very shortly. And that is the item of God's program for this hour. And everything is speaking and gearing towards it. All the situation on ground, all the crisis, all that is happening here and there, is a sign that Jesus is coming. The trumpet is about to sound. And every believer should prepare, determine to make heaven at last. Heaven is for those who are ready for it. Heaven is not for the careless souls. It's not for carefree people. It's not for any how life people. It's not for those who don't value it, who don't need it, who value the world more than heaven, who value the things of this world more than, more than it. It's for those who are preparing and determined to make it and ensuring that nothing is standing between them and God. So heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And those who will make heaven are those who are preparing for it. So, if you look at the Bible in Amos chapter 4, verse 12. Amos chapter 4 and verse 12. Amos chapter 4. I read verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Prepare to meet your God. Meeting God requires what? Therefore, prepare for it. Determine, prepare. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, from verse 15. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. From verse 15. But as he which had called you is holy. So be holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. If you must enter heaven, be ye holy. God, whom you are going to dwell with, is what? Holy. So be holy in your thought, in your action, your disposition, your comportment. Everything concerning you in your purity, holiness, inside and outside. 
prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. In Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. I read from verse 8. And a highway shall be there, and a way shall be called the way of holiness. Don't clean shall not, uh, shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men. The fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sight shall flee away. Listen to me. If you want to make heaven, heaven is a holy place. There is a road to heaven. Praise the Lord. The Bible said it is a highway of what? Holiness. And the only body that must enter heaven must pass through that way. And the only way to explain this road, so you can understand it, is what? It said the redeemed shall walk there. That means that highway of holiness must be that we pass through Jesus Christ. We pass through the blood of the everlasting covenant. We receive the newness of life through Jesus Christ. And by so doing, as you receive that newness of life, as I washed in the blood of Jesus, you go on by the grace of God to live the holiness inside and outside. And that's why he call it what? Highway of what? Holiness. Praise the Lord. So that highway stands as Jesus, our, our sanctifier. And when you, when you give your life to him, you will be washed. And you will receive grace to live righteous life. Well, the point is, a highway shall be there. And that is what? Way of holiness. So, like a post of old, which you determine to make it, he said, I keep my body under. I don't want to run this race and have to be a castaway. Determine, like him, and be temperate in all things. We must not allow any loose life any careless life compromise with the world we should be serious minded and must endure all trials afflictions and persecutions no matter the circumstances determined to make heaven at last are you hearing me second timothy chapter 3 i read verse 10 it says Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. I don't know the challenges you are facing now in life as a Christian. Chapter 3 verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering. Charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconon, at Lystra. What persecution I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yeah. All that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You have challenges. You have persecution at the hand of ungodly people at the hand of evil people, even at the hand of brethren. You have trials. You have challenges. But no matter the situation, what the apostle said, I endured. You should endure. 
He said, I'm running up and down and misfocus and go to hell. Endure, the Lord will see you through. Hence, you determine to make heaven. Endure. God will definitely see you through. Are you hearing me? Endure the trial, the affliction, the persecution, the temptation. Endure. The Lord will see you through. Our enemy and the enemy of God may bring a lot of problems in your life. And your ways to make it to compromise, to make it to backslide, to make it to be angry. But there is nothing to worry about that. If God be for you, who can be against you? It is a short while. Are you hearing me? The Lord will deliver you. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. In that your trial and persecution and trouble, a little while he shall come. Very shortly, the Lord will come to rapture us. The Lord will come to take us away. Or we shall go to meet with him and part no more. And our tears shall be wiped away. Our sorrows shall be no more. Our hunger shall be no more. Our thirst shall be no more. Honestly, my brethren, we shall enter into unspeakable joy. Can I hear you say amen? I don't know what I'm going through. A little while. It will not tarry. It will not be a long time. Jesus will come to take us home. Are you waiting for it? Let not your heart be well troubled. There is a mansion for you. And the Lord has gone to prepare us a place for me and for you. To go to be with him forever and ever. So get ready. For those who will be careless and miss heaven, such people will suffer in hell fire. And that forever. Remember, if your hands will cause you to make to miss heaven to be cast into hell fire, cut it off. My prayer is none of you, no member of this church. None of us that shall miss heaven at last in Jesus' name. I pray that my Father, the God whom I serve, will give us grace to make it. He will help us. He will help us overcome trials and temptation, persecution. He will help us, having determined, oh, of our own selves, we can do nothing. If we determine, the Lord will help you. I said the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, determine to make heaven at last. And once you determine, you will find the grace. I say you will find what? The grace. Help will come. Help will come from above. God will help you. God will help you to stand. God will help you to overcome. God will walk and perfect that which concerns you. Determine to make heaven at last. So that's why I'm stopping the message. But let me conclude with the area you have to look into. Praise the Lord. For those who are sinners and those who are backsliders and they compromise, compromise us. They should repent. They should confess their sins to the Lord and promise God no more. They should believe that Jesus died for them, shed his precious blood for them, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for their justification. Believe it. Reject the devil, reject his evil. Confess those who forsake them. Invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart. To be a Lord, their personal savior. Salvation shall be yours. May I remind you, a Christian is not a sinner. And a sinner is not a Christian. Look at your Bible. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 
First John chapter 3 verse 8 He that committed sin is of the devil For the devil sinned it from the beginning For this purpose the Son of God was manifested That they might destroy the works of the devil Verse 9 Whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin For he still remained him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. It is very clear, verse 8 says, A sinner is not a Christian. Verse 9 says, A Christian is not a sinner. What is sin? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, a, All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Search your life. Um, forgiveness is sin. Unbelief is sin. Selfishness is sin. Anger is sin. Lying is sin. Hatred is sin. Pride is sin. Contention is sin. Strife. Keeping malice. Bearing grudge, bitterness, all these things are terrible sin. Love of money, love of the world, covetousness, all these things are terrible sins. Such your life. I don't know the one you are into. Unfaithfulness. You need to search your life. Amend your ways. Promise God no more. I don't know the wickedness I into. Insincerity. Exaggerations. Confess that and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Unclean thoughts. Confess that and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Murmuring. Barbiety. Speaking evil of other people, cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, making idol, having idol in your heart. Confess them and renounce them. Going to native doctors to make sure. Or practicing that kind of evil. Be the native doctor. Amend your ways. Belonging to secret court or open court. International or local court, marine court, witchcraft court, any kind of courtism. Confess the lineal, the gather their property, bond them, consulting the dead, going for pan reading. You need us. If they have given you any property, gather them, bond them, don't use them anymore. I mean, you are. Maybe they gave you seven book of Moses. Maybe they gave you some rings or chains. Maybe they raised altar in your house. Where you going to go and then bow to them? Go and burn those things. Amend your ways. I don't know if you are, maybe you are among those people that are stealing, picking pockets, arm robbery, or burglary, or you know, one chance, motorcycle robbery, picking things. I don't belong to you. Confess this evil and promise God no more. Ask for mercy. This is the month of mercy. And God will show you mercy and cancel your judgment. Are you hearing me? Amend your ways. Whatsoever they are giving to you, don't use them anymore. And if you are stealing from people, from the white people, black people, you are into fraud, do black or white people, you rob people, you rob bank, you rob government, you steal from them, don't bring the money here. We don't need it. If you are stealing any money, it's only about the owner. Amen, you are waste. Those that give bribe and take bribe, extort money from people because of a uniform, because of a position. Those that are fighting and quarreling, those that are beating their wife, those that are disobedient to their husband, stubborn, 
confess this evil and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Those working for people, they don't do the work. They collect salary. A fraud. Or don't pay those working for them. That is sin. Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do it no more. And mend your ways. I don't know the wickedness I into. Those people are into smuggling. Those are taking snuff, smoking cigarettes, Indian hemp, cocaine, heroin, selling it and buying it for people. All those into, into taking alcoholic drinks, 1% or half percent. Local one or foreign one, white people, book to beer. Confess them. Don't sell it. Don't buy it for people. Don't buy it for anybody. Don't touch it. I mean, you are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Search your life. In First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of the self of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor, nor revelers, nor extortioners, can inherit the kingdom of God. He said, don't be deceived. People like this shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Is it those into polygamous marriage? They have three wives. They are second or third wife. That is evil. Or you marry and divorce. You divorce your wife, divorce your husband. If that man is your first husband, return back to him. If that woman is your first wife, return back, bring her back. And if you marry them three, remove the second and third one. And if a second wife or third wife, back your load and go. And if somebody hijacked you on the road without the consent of your parents, and you are living together as a husband and a wife, now you have children, go and meet the family and make their marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman with the consent of your the parents until they do your part. Let me show you something from the Bible in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twin but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And mend your ways. If you have made a mistake, correct it before it is too late. Marriage is between a man and a woman until they do your part. And if you have a second wife, third wife, back your load, go. You don't have a husband. And if you're a man, marry them three. Remove second and third one, and then your first wife. And if you are run away from your husband, for any reason, return back to him. And if you're a man that sent away your wife, bring her back. Until they do your part. Search your life as I begin to round up. All those into masturbation, fornication, adultery, homosexual, lesbianism you must repent and promise God no more, no more masturbation lose into prostitution no more I mean you are ways I don't know the evil you are into search your life as I round up those into abortion those into killing I've told you before 
and mend your ways. Whether higher assassin, whether you are into you know kidnapping and killing, whether you are into terrorism, repent to and say, Lord, I am sorry. And if a woman that paint your hands and paint your leg, paint your mouth and paint your eyes, paint your body, and put an extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment and weave on, palm in and jewelry, mango of any form, you don't need those things. Of your young man that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, and play the head like a woman, you don't need it. Or you dress, expose your chest, your armpit, your tummy, expose your nakedness. You must cover your body properly because a Christian is not a seducer, and a seducer is not a Christian. And if you're a young man that, you know, when you dress, your trousers can no longer cover your waist. My friend, that is abomination. I mean, you are ways. My Bible tells me in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, when they are spoiled, what shall they do? They will go after painting, after ornament. Whenever they are spoiled, they begin to change their body. Whenever a woman is spoiled, they begin to dress like a prostitute. Young men like that, I mean, you are ways. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Are you into abortion? Are you into shy trafficking? These are wickedness. I mean, you are ways. Are you, are you a woman that is wearing trousers? Dressing like a man? That's wickedness. That's abomination. Are you a man wearing skirt and blouse? That is something wrong with you. It's a sign of possession. If you, you are dressing like that, the Bible says it's an abomination. Look at the Bible in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. It says, The woman shall not put that which pertains to man. And a man should not put on that which pertains to a woman. For all that do so are abomination of the Lord thy God. They are what? Abomination. And abominable people cannot enter heaven. Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation 21. Let's see verse 8. For the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars that have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Such people shall be cast into hell fire. Remember, it is never the will of God that any soul should perish. Why am I mentioning these things? If you don't know your sin, you can't repent of them. You can't confess them. You can't stop them. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs 28 verse 19, He that covereth the sin shall not prosper, but whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. That's why I mention them so you know you are evil and say, I'm sorry, and confess them to the Lord, and the Lord will show your mercy. Don't forget, God has made a provision for the sins that are past. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, the Bible said, Without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sin. For our sin to be remitted, blood must be atoned, blood must be shed. Now, there is something you need to understand. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, God said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now, that is the blood of animal. The blood of a, of a lamb without blemish. And that plays a symbol. Of the blood of Jesus, which is to come in the New Testament. So the blood of animal cannot wash away our sins. And therefore, God used that place as a symbol to introduce to us the blood of the everlasting covenant. The blood of Jesus. Look at the Bible in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I read verse 29. 
The next day, John saw Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold, the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that person? Jesus Christ. That is what Exodus was signifying, symbolizing the blood of who? Jesus Christ. That is the lamp. That is the true lamp. The lamp of God, which taketh away our sin. Not covering our sin, but watches it away. No wonder the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth it shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you look at John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. The end of all sacrifice for sin, he said, It is all over. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is not a way. He is the only way. No wonder he said in John chapter 10, verse 10, be, I come that they might have life, have it more abundantly. He has come to give us what? Eternal life. And the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make us free, we shall be free indeed. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Come to me, O ye that labor and a heavy ladder, and I will give you rest. And in John chapter 1, please look at the Bible, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. Let's see. It says. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as receive who? What power did they receive? Power of sonship. When you receive that power, your life will be transformed. You live in newness of life. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. If any man be in who? So, I urge you, rush. Give your life to Jesus today. Make you your Lord, your personal Savior. I'm assuring you, your sins shall be washed away. And grace for sonship, grace for righteousness, shall be your portion. I don't know what you are looking for. Many people here, they want God to bless you, to heal you, to deliver you, to do miracles in your life. And in fact, since you came, since any month, you have been hearing of miracles, wonders, signs, great things. Sometimes you even be wondering, can it be possible? Now it is possible. But do the first thing first. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So it is possible. Miracles. Jesus said, Miracles are children's bread. Miracles belong to the children. If you need a miracle, are you a child of God? Praise the Lord. Jesus told that woman, miracles, that thing you are talking about, miracles, they are what? Children's bread. And the woman said, well, if this thing is like this, it belongs to the children, then the, the woman said, well, even what fell from, the, from, from children's mouth, dog will take it. The woman, in other words, saying, I'm like a dog, even though I'm not qualified. Please, I eat the fruit from children's mouth. But instead of being a dog here, become a child of God. A miracle will follow you home. Can I hear you say amen to that? So the Bible said in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. But don't forget. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So what are you looking for? Become a child of God. God will give it to you. Then finally, 
In Romans chapter 10 verse 13 He said Romans chapter 10 verse 13 Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Shall be saved Rise up and let us pray Rise up Determine to make heaven at last Whatever you need here today God will do it for you Make sure you give your life to Jesus And be born again Open your mouth and pray Everybody pray Everybody Everybody Call upon him in spirit and in truth call upon him in repentance determine to make heaven at last determine determine you will make it if you, if you determine everybody prayer when you determine you will not compromise you will find every distractions Determine to make heaven at last everybody. Determine. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Everybody pray. Everybody. Everybody pray. Determine to make heaven at last. Make up your mind. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to perish. I don't want to go to hell fire. Make up your mind. Oh Lord, have mercy upon your people. Oh Lord, I pray for every one of us that is here. Give us grace to amend our ways and to ensure heaven and end of this life. Save everyone, save everyone. Lincoln Press in Jeluvia, Ranga Yara Kazin Jelia, Mondia Kataya Maruski Te, Rubu Koshika Pelusia, Mondia Kampeluski Te, Walk on your people, bring conviction, conviction, restoration. Father, I pray, Lord, bring determination, O God. Upon everyone to make it all end, let's get the leak and see. Jeluvia Kataya Marusia, help us, Lord. Everybody pray. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Determine. Seek it first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen, your ways. Pray. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father, oh Lord, I want more time. Sorry, Lord. Father, oh Lord, if you are truly sorry, just raise your hands up. I want to pray for you. That person that is smoking in their hand, promise God no more. That woman that committed abortion, repent and ask for mercy. The young man into masturbation. Don't do it anymore. And into homosexual, don't do it anymore. That person smoking and drinking, promise God no more. That person into prostitution, don't try, don't go back to that evil. The one that is pregnant now and you want to do abortion, if you try it, you are looking for judgment and anger of God. Don't touch that child. Keep your hands up. 
you that have unforgiving heart forgive and God will forgive you I'm praying for you renounce secret courts and all those charms you have collected burn them and mend your ways that person that is into killing don't kill anymore I mean your ways as for mercy no more kidnapping and killing no more robbery no more evil no more smoking in their hand no more evil I'm praying for you keep your two hands up sing this song I surrender I surrender all to Jesus bless Savior I surrender I surrender keep your hands up say this all after me Almighty God I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. From today, I confess them before you. I renounce them. And I reject the devil. And I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me. And he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. Give me grace for righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your two hands off. Sing that song once again. I sorry. I surrender, I surrender all to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender, I surrender. Keep your hands up and pray for you. Our Father in heaven, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I present this, my beloved brethren, before you. Whatsoever they have done in time past, known and unknown to them, Father, in your wrath, remember mercy. For mercy rejoices over judgment. Father, by your mercy, let judgment that is me be cancelled. From this hour, O oh God, I pray that every yoke that made them to do evil, by your authority, I break that yoke. Yoke of smoking and drunkenness and yoke of killing, abortion and prostitution. I break in Jesus' name. Every yoke of unrighteousness, I break in Jesus' name. From this hour, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. Father, I cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Shall big amen. 
Father, sanctify believers. Restore them back to faith. Baptize them with Holy Ghost and power in Jesus' name. Say amen three times. Amen.